Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 17. And in this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about aliases in my SQL. So uh, yeah, if you guys watched, and I'm particularly guilty of doing this in the last tutorial. So if you've watched the last tutorial, uh, then you'll know that I actually made a query that was like really, really, really long. And that's the problem is sometimes queries can get quite, quite long. So uh, there is this thing called an alias, which helps us uh, make our queries just a little bit shorter. So if you want to uh, save on a few keystrokes and you just want to uh, make that query a little bit shorter and a little bit easier to read, then um, using an alias is uh, what that's there for, right? So now that we know that, uh, let's take a look at what I want to do in this tutorial. Uh, and basically, I want you to go over to the orders table, and I think we'll select the order ID, and then we'll also select the product name from the products table. So I want to join two tables together, which is something that we have done over the past couple of tutorials, and I think it's going to make a lot more sense uh, if I just go ahead and type this out. So go over the SQL tab and we know from the previous tutorials that I'm going to type select and then whatever fields I want to select. So let's select the orders dot order ID. Something I think I might have missed or skipped over in the previous tutorials is that um, we can put our backticks around our field ID like this. So I have been using backticks for most of the tutorials and I think I skipped over it in the previous tutorial, but uh, yeah, this is where your backticks would go um, if you're gonna be using backticks. And I think it's kind of good practice to use backticks, especially if you have columns that have spaces in them. Uh, but if you don't have columns or spaces in them, then you'll probably find that your query will work fine, just fine without the uh, uh, backticks. So it's up to you, right? Um, so let's select the orders.orderID and the products dot, uh, product name. Uh, and I want to select these obviously from two tables. So we're going to say from the first table, which is order orders, and then also uh, join that onto the second table, which is uh, products. And I'm going to join them on a specific field. And that field is going to be where orders dot product ID is equal to products dot product ID. And the reason why we're joining them on that specific um, field is because product uh, products product ID is in the products table and uh, orders dot products ID is in the orders table. So it's the one field that is in both of those tables. So that's what connects the two tables. And now if I copy this and hit go, um, yeah, I do have a working query. Uh, so we have our order ID and we have our product name over here. But uh, I could have saved a lot of time <laughs> or I could have saved a lot of uh, writing if I had used an alias. So right now you can see we're specifying our table name over here and then we're specifying our table name over here and then we're specifying our tables again over here and then we're specifying specifying our tables again over here as well so it gets a little bit annoying um, because you're typing out the table name the whole time when you could actually just use an alias so in this case i'm going to replace um, orders over here with o and then i'm going to replace orders over here with an O and then I'm going to replace products with a, a P and products over here with a P. So basically now whenever we're uh, mentioning a column name, we're only uh, using this little shortcut, right? Uh, and the reason why I didn't change it over here is because we still kind of need to mention the product uh, or the uh, tables over here, right? So where you're using a field or where you're mentioning a field, it's fine to use the shortcut, but where you're mentioning the actual tables after the from clause, that's where you have to have to have to have the uh, table name. But there's something else that you have to add in here as well, which is the as keyword. And um, then you specify the shortcut that you want to um, shorten this table to. So in this case, I've already set that to O. So now I'm selecting O dot order ID from orders as O. So now our query knows to treat the orders table as the letter O. And 
if I do the same thing over here, our query will know to treat the products table as the letter P and that has somewhat shortened our query. And I suppose if you took this exact same concept and put it in the tutorial that we did previously, tutorial number 16, you'll see that the query will actually go from being like four lines long to being like three lines long, just because uh, you've cut out all of those table names. And if I copy this now and hit go, you can see that the query still runs perfectly. So I've got the same results, but I just managed to save a few um, keystrokes in actually writing that query. So yeah, that is how you use an alias and that's what it's there for. So now that you know how to use an alias, go back and watch the previous video and implement the exact same thing that we did in the previous video, but add the aliases. And I think that that's gonna be a really great learning experience for you. But that is the end of the tutorial. So before I say goodbye, I just wanna send a huge shout out to these guys. And these guys are my patrons who contribute $5 or more every single month on Patreon. So if you do like the videos I create and you wanna help me make more videos more often, then consider becoming a patron and if you can't support me financially, then another way to help out is to just hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment and share this video because that's also going to really help my channel grow and I'll see you guys next time.